Hello everyone and welcome back to the Crime Center. We will be discussing the murder of Ying Ying Zhang. If you haven't checked out part one already, be sure to do so because this will make no sense to you if you haven't. And this has been one of the most chilling cases that I have ever witnessed in my history of true crime. Please be advised that this podcast is purely our opinion that is based on facts from the cases. It does not reflect any opinion of any of our sponsors. You are entitled to your own views. If you have a different viewpoint, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, The Crime Center, and leave a comment down below. Hello, everyone. I am Carter Covington. Hello, everyone. I'm Anna Brazil Coglin. And as I said before, you can go and check out part one of this really chilling murder of Ying Ying Zhang. Uh, I'm just going to take a moment to discuss the case so far. So if you had any thoughts, Anna, you could jump in now and just discuss the case as of now. Okay, Carter. In part one of this podcast, a young vet visiting Chinese scholar named Yi Ying Zhang was running late for her new lease appointment. As a result, she missed her bus and had to wait for the next one. As she was waiting, a Saturn Astra pulled up beside her and gave her a ride. Ying Ying was no, never seen again. After a thorough investigation, Brent Christensen became the main suspect. Again, if you have not watched part one, I highly re recommend that you do so. So as you just heard, this has been a very, very chilling case as of late. And um, it only gets more creepy after this. So let's get right into it. On June 15th, local police and FBI questioned Christensen and executed a search warrant for his car. The black Saturn Astra was towed to a secure bay at the Champaign Police Department and on June 18th was transported to the FBI main office in Springfield. The police noted that the passenger door of his car appeared to have been cleaned to a more diligent extent than the other vehicle doors, which they said may be indicative of an attempt or effort to conceal or destroy evidence. During questioning on June 15, Christensen admitted that he had given an Asian female a, a ride, but said that he dropped her off only a, a few blocks when a wrong turn caused her to panic. Concurrent with, with his questioning, agents at Christensen's apartment saw and obtained written permission from an occupant of the residence for search and, and seizure of items at the residence. Agents took possession of computers and a cell phone belonging to Christensen and subsequently sought and obtained a federal search warrant for a forensic examination of the phone. Law enforcement agencies then placed Christensen under continuous surveillance beginning or about June 16th 2017. So this is when this case really starts taking a turn. We have the FBI who's now really full-fledged on Christensen, who is taking his phone for searching, who's taking his car. They are really narrowing in on their suspect, and it really seems like the FBI are onto something. Yeah, uh, at the meeting, you're, you're probably wondering, well, why did they let him go? They had to let him go because there was no evidence. There was no concrete evidence. And they just basically had his word that she left the car. And they could not prove any different, so they had to let him go. And that's a great point. And that's why um, the real shocking part of this case um, starts. I mean, Christensen, I do want to add this. Christensen had a wife and he had a side thing. So he had... His wife would go out on business trips and this woman would come over to his home and he really spent a lot of good time with this woman. Um, well, they had an open marriage. Correct. You know, each, uh, the wife had her boyfriend and he had his girlfriend and that's the, that's the way they lived. Correct. And um, Christensen at this point is not knowing of the amount of trouble that he could be in with this case. However, the FBI cannot take this case to trial and cannot take Christensen in to a jail because of the fact that they don't have a body. 
they still do not have the body of Ying Ying Zhang. So what do they need? They need a confession. The agents really come up with a creative way on how they're exactly going to get this confession. And that is through none other than Christensen's girlfriend. Tara, I believe her name is, is pronounced Tara. Yes. Um, so she was approached by the FBI and she agreed to wear a wire. Um, and she wanted to know what exactly happened to this young girl. I think that she kind of felt a sense of um, duty as to help this family. But she also thought that Christensen was not guilty. She thought that this was that this would clear his name if he did not commit the crime. And on June 29th, Christensen, it, it, he went to a walk for Zhang with his girlfriend. Uh, they had FBI agents in the crowd on that day. And Christensen made a really stunning confession at the walk for Ying Ying that was supposed to honor her, that was supposed to bring bring this media attention to her case. And he made this confession and people didn't realize it at the time, but the killer of Ying Ying was in the crowd. It's 6.46 on Thursday, June 29th. We're at the benefit for the walk and Brent has a thing of alcohol and he is drinking while he's here. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna turn this on right now so that it's on while we walk. This is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, but like, like my version of safer is looking at my sister. That's me. So weird. I don't even know how to process it. There's people there tonight. They want to home safe. It's just safe. They talk about it. You have no idea what happened. Nobody knows what happened. person I would consider at my level that actually did anything head button. He was caught in the eighties. I told you I'm like thirteen talking to me. Like so long. Having been bored. Part Sounds of like Yang didn't bore you. Hmm? Sounds like Yang didn't bore you. <laughs> she bored you? Yeah. She did it. So this is a truly stunning confession that he makes without even knowing it. Yeah, he's comparing himself to uh, Ted Bundy. He's proud of it. And he wants his girlfriend to know that, that's, that he's a ser serial killer. And it's just stunning. Yeah, and his girlfriend, Sarah Bullis, I do want to say that she testified at the trial uh, that she had agreed to help the FBI because she wanted to clear his name but obviously that did not happen and she was stunned at this confession and um on june 30th the fbi did take christensen into custody and charged him with the kidnapping and murder of ying ying zhang yeah i believe they did find some blood evidence in his apartment 
Yes, there that is still true. Traces of blood of her blood in the apartment in her apartment. And Christensen, while he was in jail, made another stunning confession, and he said that he had disposed of the body of Ying Ying Zhang limb by limb and put it in his trash can to go to the landfill. And I do want to add that the body of Ying Ying Zhang has not been found um, since her murder and probably will never be found. Yes, which is, which is, it makes it even that much more difficult for her family because they wanted her body so they can give her a proper burial. But the poor family didn't even get that. Yeah. And after, after Christensen uh, made that stunning confession, he was indicted by a grand jury for the kidnapping and murder of Ying Ying Zhang. And on June 24, 2019, the 12-member jury deliberated for less than two hours before returning its verdict. Christensen was found guilty of one count of kidnapping resulting in the death and two counts of making false statements to agents of the FBI. During sentencing deliberations, the jury could not unanimous, unanimously agree to sentence Christensen to death. As a result, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole on July 18, 2019. So justice in this case was finally served on July 18, 2019. However, there was still that void in so many people's lives that Christensen caused and it really did not go away. The pain just did not go away. This, is, this man was the last person anyone would have ever thought that would do such a thing. He had no criminal record. He was also in the university. He was studying for his PhD and everybody liked him. He said he was very helpful. And they, would, they just could not believe that this was the man that did it. He, 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 he choked her, raped her, and stabbed her, and stabbed her, and took a baseball bat and hit her in the head, and decapitated her. Yeah, and it's really stunning what uh, Christensen did. And I just want to read this one thing: that following the trial, prosecutors revealed information about Zhang's remains that Christensen divulged through his attorneys in November 2018 under in a um settlement. And he said that the day after he killed Zhang, he claimed that he put Zhang's dismembered body into three separate garbage bags, which he then disposed of in a dumpster outside of his apartment. Over the next two days, Christensen claimed he disposed of Zhang's personal belongings in various dumpsters in the Champaign-Urbana area. The dumpster in which Christensen placed Zhang's remains was emptied three days later, and the contents were taken to a private landfill in a local county. Recovery of Zhang's remains would be a difficult, and a search for her remains has not yet begun. In October of 2019, Christensen was transferred to an FTC Oklahoma City for evaluation and processing, and he is currently in a jail in Kentucky. We, we also don't know if that, in fact, is where her body is because he's a known liar. It, 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 she could be in a totally different place. Yeah, that is very correct. Um, but it's, it's so sad how we will never know what exactly happened to her. I mean, we have bits and pieces. We know that Christensen is the killer, but we will never know what happened on Ying Ying's ride home to his apartment? How did she react? Did she put up a fight? These questions will simply never be answered. That's true. We will never really know exactly what happened because you certainly cannot trust what he says. No. And um, the family of Ying Ying, I just, I can't even feel for them what, what they must be feeling. They got the man that was responsible for their daughter's murder in jail. Uh, they got justice to an extent, but they never got the full closure that they were looking for. They wanted to bury her. They wanted to bury her body. Um, but they never got that, that full closure. No, 
they, they never did and they, they, they never will. They're just going to have to, just going to have to realize that uh, it's not going to happen for them. Yeah. And that is one of the very sad aspects of this case, the body. And that was the, a big aspect of this case after they got the killer. But now I just want to open it up before we close this podcast to our thoughts on this case and our thoughts on what exactly happened in 2017. So Anna, if you want to go first, go right ahead. Well, what I think happened is I stated earlier, I think that, I think he drove up. He said, you know, he presented himself as a policeman, a cop and, and, and she, she believed him and got in the car. And that was the last, the last anyone ever saw of her. Yeah. I think, I think probably, probably anyone else would have done it too. Yeah. And I think that this was simply not, this was simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time for Ying Ying. And if she had made her bus, she would still be alive today. I think personally that she would still be alive today. Um, it but, is, it's, go ahead. I just said, I just think it's like a perfect storm. If she had seen the post, the Facebook page post from, from that lady that posted, and say, listen, watch out for this guy driving around trying to get you into the car. If she had gotten her uh, on the right on the bus on time, uh, I, I, you know, she would probably still be alive today. Yeah, and this is one she of those. Wasn't, she was all. She was also running late, which made her even more anxious to yeah. get where she was going. And everything that could go wrong went wrong for her. And it was just a case of a young, vibrant, young student who was so promising, who, who, who was so promising in the science field and was promising in China. She wanted to become a professor and she had the will, power to do so. And she was really going to make a life for herself. She was going to get um, married in October 2017. She was probably going to start a family and um, it's really sad that, that this man took it away from her. And you know, what's ironic is that he was very promising too. He was considered brilliant in his field and everyone had great promise for him. And, and, and look what happened. Yeah. Um, I think that personally he got brainwashed by something that he was watching. Um, that's how many people in this day and age do get brainwashed from YouTube, from Facebook, from Instagram, from TikTok. They get brainwashed by some of these people and end up committing such heinous crimes to an extent that he did. I mean, he he hit her with the bat until she died. He stabbed her. He raped her. This was obviously a crime of passion, like we mentioned in the O.J. Simpson case, where it was a crime of passion. It wasn't a crime of self-defense. It wasn't a crime of just, I want to kill you. It was, he was enjoying this and this was enjoyable to him. And this was his entertainment. Yeah. Well, he was, he was a psychopath. Yeah. And it's so sad that two young promising lives were totally ruined by this case. And it was overall a very, very sad case. Yes. It's very sad. And, I just uh, when I just feel so much for her family. I mean, just the anguish on the mom's face is just just breathtaking. Yeah, and her fiance that was the love of his life, um, in Ying Ying, and he will never get the chance to marry her. And it's it's just so many lives were ruined by this case. I mean, you have the girlfriend of Christensen, you have the wife of Christensen, you have. Ying Ying's parents, Ying Ying's brother, and all of the extended family, as well as the students on the Urbana Champaign campus who were really taken aback by this case and really felt it in a personal manner. And this goes to show you how so many people are vulnerable on college campuses these days and how college campuses used to be a place of security and safety, and now they're turning into a case of um, danger. 
Yeah, you can never be too careful. And, you know, you always think, gee, that's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to my daughter. It's not going to happen to anyone I love. But it's not true. It does happen. Yeah, and it goes to show you how desperate Ying Ying was to get into that car, how desperate she was to get her new apartment, and how trusting she was of people. And I think that that really ties well into her personality, how trusting she was of people. And it gives us a good insight into the type of person that she was. Yeah, but if he presented himself as a, as a policeman, then yes. she would trust him. You know, she would she would she would get in because he was a cop. He wasn't going to harm her. Yeah. Uh -huh. It just it was a very very sad case, and I hope that you enjoyed this um, this podcast. This is episode two. Me and Anna are having a lot of fun doing this. You can go check out um, episode one, which was the murder of Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman and the case of OJ Simpson. That's a very good podcast, very informative and very fact-based. So you can go check that out after you're done with this video. Uh, I want to thank you for watching this podcast or hearing this podcast and please stay tuned for more podcasts in the future. Anna, thank you for being with us once again. Oh, thank you. And I just want to say, come back next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And check out our other YouTube videos. Thank you. Thank you.